welcome you to beautiful Central Florida for PBA action with the Royal Touch. We are in Lake Wales, Florida, inside the Kegel Training Center for the PBA King of Bowling, powered by AMP. The top 10 from this season's PBA Tour, all here. And glad you're with us for the first of five consecutive Wednesday night primetime shows here on ESPN2. I'm Rob Stone. As a special treat, on the first three shows of this tour, PTI co-host Michael Wilbon will join us, and he will be bowling competitively. More on that a little bit later, but let's talk about who you will see over the course of the next five weeks. The top ten from the Player of the Year final standings list will be here as well as one wild card in that wild card, lefty Parker Bone the third. Match number one will pit Norm Duke versus Chris Barnes, and the winner will duel Player of the Year Wes Malott for his throne. Normal scoring format will be used throughout this tournament. It's hard to believe, but it has been 16 years since the last King of Bowling event was held, and conveniently enough, we have on our payroll the reigning king, Randy Peterson. How, how did you rule the bowling empire? Well, Rob, I ruled with a steel fist and a benevolent heart. I was a stern king, but a fair king. And now it's time to turn my kingdom over to the new king. And that new king is the big nasty West Malak. Yeah, he is, but the old king had had a great hairdo and a sweet chain, didn't he? But, and look at that physique, huh? <laughs> and the missus. She had a lot of hair. Yeah, she did. She's going to enjoy that flashback. Now let's meet tonight's two challengers and the man on the throne. The newly crowned PBA Player of the Year. He won three titles this season, earning the title Mr. Versatility. The big, nasty, and current king of bowling, Wes Malott. The only man on earth to win three consecutive PBA majors. 32 times the winner on the Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour, Norm Thank you, thank you. The number three player on the PBA season points list is the 2007-08 PBA Player of the Year. 12-time Lumber Liquidators PBA Tour Titleist, Chris Barnes. So you've met the two loyal subjects and today's king. Now we send it lane side. Brienne Pedigo with King West Malat the first. As player of the year, West Malat, you are our first king. Now whoever wins this first match is going to be your first opponent. So up here on the throne, what are you going to be paying attention to as Barnes and Duke battle it out? Well, I'm just going to be paying attention to uh, kind of how they're breaking the lanes down, be prepared, and uh, you know, maybe throwing some jabs in there. Uh, I know they've, uh, you know, I've got the target on me after Sunday with a roller coaster ride with them and uh, some unfortunate breaks uh, for me to remain uh, in the player of the year and take that, that honor away is just uh, unbelievable with them and, uh, you know, just have fun with us. $50,000 could be his if he can hold on to the title for the whole night. <laughs> Norm Duke and Chris Barnes both had a chance to be the king. They both had a shot to be player of the year if they won at the U.S. Open. They didn't. Wes Malott is the king. They got a chance for retribution when we return. The PBA King of Bowling, powered by AMP, is brought to you by AMP. AMP Up. AMPEnergy.com. By GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. And by Lumber Liquidator. Hardwood flooring for less. And welcome back to the Kegel Training Center here in Lake Wales, Florida for the PBA King of Bowling powered I am. Today, they are bowling on the Scorpion oil pattern, Randall. 42 feet in length, Rob, and generally what happens is the players kind of start around the track area, and as it breaks down, they move towards the center part of the lane. We saw 
Wes Malott do that all season long, but today I watched Norm Duke and Chris Barnes firing up first arrow, so it appears to be a little bit tight early on, but look for that big wheel, that big hook ball to start as the oil pattern breaks down. Again, that's your lumber liquidators. Know the wood. And we begin with Chris Barnes. Match one, Chris Barnes will open up on that play. Finished third in the final player of the year point standings list. Had a chance to be first if he won at the US Open, lost in the semis to Mike Scroggins a few weeks back. Come on! Yeah, but Rob, it was the way he lost when he gets up in the 10th frame and he needs the first strike and a spare to win and move on to the title match. He leaves a solid eight. He needs to convert that, which he does, and then he needs to strike on a fill shot to tie and leaves a 10 pin. See Wes Malata over there on the, the right side, taking in the action as the king. Here's Norm Duke, finish number two on the player of the year list. <laughs> Ed Strader is greater early on in the Scorpion pattern. Norm Duke and Chris Barnes doing just that. Rob, you ever seen that movie, The King and I? No. I think I saw it maybe like at my high school. They did a, they did a rendition of it. Okay, yeah, I, I never saw it either. Fall guy in it, right? I think so. Not Telly Savalas, the other one. Duke in the second. Uh, I think it's fair to say that Storm and Norman has uh, has the crowd on his side here. You all right? He's about an hour north of Lake Wales in Claremont, but Norm uh, has fan following wherever he is. He could be in Anchorage right now, and he'd still have the Norm Duke signs out. Here's Barnes in the second. going to be showing you location and speed throughout the matches from the CAT system provided to us by the Kegel Training Center. CAT stands for Computer Aided Tracking System. Rob, I thought that was a play. <laughs> you thought that was a play. Okay. Strike spare for Barnes through two. Duke perfect through two. Chris Barnes made eight telecasts this season, tied for the King, Wes Malott, the tour lead for that. He's also your Harry Smith point leader. Captured two titles this season, did it in Columbus, Ohio, and then followed that up a couple weeks later with another title in Norwich, Connecticut. And Rob, I thought it was interesting when you asked Chris in the interviews, you know, last season you were player of the year. This season you just missed out. Which season was better? And he said this season. Even though he didn't win player of the year, he thought that he bowled much better this season for a number of reasons. Pattern changes made it more difficult. He said the front half of the season was so slow for him. He had to kind of knock the dust off and get back at it. You could tell he's very proud without being boastful of his season. Here's Duke in the third. <laughs> Opening three bagger for Storm and Norman. Those kickbacks are a glorious thing, aren't they? I'm sorry you had to watch that. Feathered <laughs> <laughs> that right one up right around 6'7. Six, six goes to the sidewalk, cuts the 10 out. Kind of looks like your bowling ball hitting the pins, Rob. A lot of power. Yeah, yeah a, lot of, a lot of shrapnel when I'm throwing it out there. There it is, Rob. That's all for you, my friend. What do you do? Four in a row or a four bagger. See, it doesn't sound as good, right? That's why you got to yell ham bone. It comes from deep within, Randall. From the diaphragm. Ooh. Lumber Liquidator PBA Tour titles for Chris Barnes, including two this year. 
believe he's already in top 10 in money for career earnings at 1.6, almost $1.7 million. This guy has been a cash cow since starting uh, out on this tour. Oh, since 1998, Rob, lots of cash. Cash is king, $10,000 each time you win the role of king on this show. So Wes could win 50K. Barnes, another strike in the fifth. Yeah, yeah, left, right, left, right, slide. Left, right, left, right, slide, describing his footwork which he didn't really like on that shot. But when you have a great arm swing like he has, a great hand, and you don't grab it at the bottom, you can still strike. Duke looking to open up with five straight. <laughs> Yahtzee! <laughs> hey, you might have to bring them all out for this match. I may invent a few. And here's Norm on what was his biggest win this season? Well, the world championship, no question. Uh, it's the third straight major in a row. I mean, that, that's probably the, the biggest event of my career. There have been others that I would uh, put, you know, right there in the, in the same, uh, on the same level, but for that to be number three. Okay, seven pin. That's all right, as long as the ten's not standing with it. No messenger. No nothing. Nobody loves the messenger like you. More than this. That's guy. exactly right. <laughs> Norm cleans that up. So Barnes, Duke. Five and a half done. The other five and a half on the backside. The winner to take on the benevolent King Westmalot the first. The conclusion of Barnes Duke when we return to Lake Wales. Welcome back to ESPN's continuing coverage of the PBA King of Bowling powered by AMP. We are in Lake Wales, Florida at the Kegel Training Center. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Brienne Pedigo here with you. The first of five consecutive Wednesday nights on ESPN2. Our second show coming your way April 29th. And you will see U.S. Open champ Mike Scroggins taking on Patrick Allen, an all-lefty clash to determine who will take on the king. That one at 9 Eastern on ESPN2. has gone strike, spare, strike, 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 which means he's sitting on a potential cambo. <laughs> Just shy of a big four, but still a big mess. But and the difference, Rob, is the higher rev rate of Chris Barnes, more revolutions, is going to read the dry part of the lane much more aggressively than Norm Duke's ball. Norm's much softer with his hand and just kind of letting the lane take it. So if Chris jumps on one just a little bit, he runs the risk of doing what he just did there, and that's leaving the 6, 7, 10. Great pickup. Crowd getting up. That ought to get him amped up, no pun intended, but there's no other way to make that unless you bounce out. He covered it perfectly. Ah, I like the composure here by Barnes. Huge pickup. Back to work here in the seventh. Come on. We've heard it. Over the course of the last couple seasons, Randy, a lot of folks telling us, taking on Chris Barnes, we got a chance if it's one match. 
if it's an extended format, odds are he's going to be your winner. He is easily one of the most feared bowlers out here. Well, anybody can beat anybody in a one-game match, as you know, Rob, but you're exactly right. See how much softer off the end of the pattern his ball is? Don't say no. Yes, you do. And that was a huge split conversion for Chris Barnes because he, he's still only 22 down. The problem is Norm Duke is throwing strikes, and he's got the pocket on both lanes. Six strikes and seven frames for Duke. We begin the eighth. Leaves the four, a little, little high on that one. And you saw our catch comparison of both players playing the lanes in terms of location at approximately the same spot. They're both right around the first arrow. Now that location is marked at about 15 feet where the arrows are, the fifth board, sixth board. The difference is in rotation. Chris Barnes rev rate is right at about 400. Norm Duke's right at 300. Duke and Barnes met in the title match of the PBA World Championships back in October 26th. Won by Norm, and there is your King, Wes Malott. And I, I got to tell you, I'm a little disappointed with Wes. He's not using the crown. He's not using the robe, the scepter. He's just not acclimated yet, Rob. It'll take give, time. Give him some time. <laughs> Barnes drops all 10. And there, you know, you're getting the, the feeling that Wes is now saying, all right, the gimmicky stuff is fine and all, but it's time to focus in on my competition and how these lanes are breaking down because I've got money on the line up next. Or, or maybe he's just kind of more of a casual king. Lead by example. I, I mean, I'd like to see the, the court. I want some jesters, some juggling people, doing some somersaults. I want to see the someone making jokes. The guy that, that breathes the fire. I want to see that guy. Maybe we can get that in the budget next year. That's where we begin the foundation frame ninth. Come on. Yeah! Get on down! He gave that the look. You know, Rob, when you give it the look, he gave him the stink eye. The stink eye. Nice. There it is. I saw it. So Barnes now with three in the row. Three in a row gives way to Duke, whose advantage is at two. Storm and Norman kicks them all. The winner with a one game match versus player of the year, Wes Malott for the title of King. What a beautiful shot. Now here's the deal. You want me to bring you up to speed, Rob? Please. Well, if Norm strikes out, he shoots 259. The best Chris Barnes can shoot 257. So you're telling me Norm can win if he strikes out here? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Strike number one in the books. One more and nine. He moves on to take on the big nasty West Malott for the battle of the kingdom and the crown. What kind of king do you think he'll be remembered as, West Malad, if he doesn't hold on to it? Are we, are we talking like King Louis XIV, King Tut, Larry King? What kind of king is, is he gonna be? Duke, second ball in the 10. Norman. Right. Now Chris Barnes needs two in the tenth, and he will take down Norm Duke. Come on, Norman. This one pushes just a little bit too long down the lane, leaving the flat ten with a hopeless messenger looking for it, and he knows it. Guess what? We get to see Barnes perform in the tenth frame yet again. Now this is more like Norm Duke bowling, not what we saw at the U.S. Open in the title match a few weeks back. Yeah, when you talk to Norm about the U.S. Open, he said, you know, I, I think I made the wrong ball choice. Never really 
seem comfortable out there, really battling the oil. And here's Barnes, needs two strikes and then two pins to take on the king, Wes Malott. I like it. I like it a lot. Pretty good shot there. Remember the US Open, he needed that first strike in the 10th. He threw it that looked just like this ball right here, except that solid eight was standing. One more for Chris Barnes and two pins. And he will move on. Barnes puts himself in similar positions almost every other week on the tour. And that's a compliment. It means he's making TV, means he's making money, means he's moving up the player of the year list. And he always seems to have some clutch opportunities to shine or to fall. Can't throw him any better than that. I mean, this is just piped. Yes. Just don't throw a gutter ball. Mission accomplished. Barnes, Malat for the title of King. 257, 248. Advantage, Barnes. moves on to play our king, Wes Malott. Now, you know Wes really likes the scorpion oil pattern. How do you feel about bowling him on his favorite pattern? Well, actually, I think we renamed that pattern the beast pattern. Uh, you know, it's pretty much a league shot for him, it seems like. Every time he bowls on it, he averages 260. So, uh, you know, I ought to be lucky. This time, I was a benefactor. I got some, Norm had some bad breaks, and I, I was uh, the recipient. But uh, I'll probably need some more if I'm going to advance. The challenge for the king coming up next, guys. Thanks, Bree. And when we return, PTI co-host Michael Wilbon joins us to talk PBA and his upcoming challenge match with the current king, Wes Malott. ESPN welcomes you back to our continuing coverage of week one of the PBA King of Bowling Series powered by AMP. Come your way from Lake Wales, Florida and time now to get on board one of the biggest discussion points of this PBA season. We've dubbed it the PTI debate. Michael Wilbon and Wes Malott dueling, so to speak, verbally. I don't think Wilbon quite understands the sport well enough and I think he's going to get uh, He's going to get a, a, a big lesson on the sport by coming down and, and doing this. And I, I think it's going to be really good for our sport in general because, uh, you know, after doing this, Wilbon is, is definitely going to, you know, talk a lot about it and, and hopefully inform and, and people will, will understand our sport to, you know, a lot more than, than what they do now. So that is Wes Malott. Time for the rebuttal with Michael Wilbon. I like the fact that the king just calls you Wilbon. <laughs> he's never met you before, and he's just, yeah, I guess when you're 6'5", 250-plus, but oh, like a linebacker, you can call you whatever, whatever you want. Uh, let, let's start first. We have a big challenge match coming up, begins next week. But tell me about your bowling pedigree. <laughs> I'm Ju using that Junior loosely. leagues in Chicago? Nice, nice. That would be the bowling pedigree. Bowling all my life, not necessarily well. I, I love bowling, and, and Wes is right. I mean, part of this is to figure, find out more about it and inform. I mean, people think they know about it until you're behind the scenes and you see it up close and personal. You don't know as much as you think you do. So you've seen it up close and personal for a little while. Now we just saw the match between Chris Barnes and Norm Duke. You, you go back to the, to the set, and what are you going to tell Tony Kornheiser? I threatened and challenged Tony because I know I've learned so much more and had a couple of lessons here, even from Wes. You can call me anything you want, by the way. He's bigger than I am. Just watching someone in person in competition pick up a 6, 7, 10. I mean, it's not the kind of thing you see, you know, at your neighborhood lane. And that was 
just fun to see in competition like this. Now, I'm loving this PTI jersey. Yeah, I mean, this, this, that's a huge score when you take that back. Kornheiser does not get one of no. these, and I get one. No, nor will he get one. Although we may welcome him back next season, actually. We'll, we'll do anything for attention. But now the big thing is, today, for the first time ever, you had a ball drilled for you. Yes. And a, a little different look, something you're not used to. Fingertip professionally drilled, professionally set up. The first two times I handled the new ball in practice on the other lanes in the right. dark, I threw strikes. That will not translate into strikes See, out here. So Wes has nothing to worry I about. I don't like your lack of confidence here. Now, let, let's talk about what is at stake. A 57-pin advantage has been handed to you, and Wes is going to... Request it. Uh, request it. <laughs> I'll say hand it. And Wes is going to roll with a plastic ball. Now, what, what is on the line here? I don't know what the, the bet is. I, I told Wes that I may, he may have to, he, for winning, he may have to host PTI. And putting up with Kornheiser, that would seem more like losing the bet. But that may be the outcome of good this. Good point. Well, actually, you, you, you weren't given the facts here. Uh-oh. All right. Now, if you win, if you about. win, you are an exempt bowler. If you lose over your shoulder on the PTI set for a good day, week, maybe a month. That's fair the enough. The big headshot of Wes Mallott, per enough. the executive producer of PTI, Eric Reitholm. So get, get used to the big fella breathing down your neck over there. That's fine. All right. My <laughs> Michael Wilbon is going to join us in the booth for our next match. Chris Barnes taking on the king, Wes Mallott. Can the king hold on to his throne? Find out with Randy, myself, and Michael Wilbon. The PBA King of Bowling, powered by Amp, rolls on here in Lake Wales. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Brienne Pedigo, and PTI co-host Michael Wilbon joining you right now. Our next King of Bowling show coming your way Wednesday night, April 29th, a Southpaw showdown. Mike Scroggins, your U.S. Open champion, taking on boss Patrick Allen, the winner, to then meet our King. Who will our king be? It'll be either Chris Barnes or Wes Mallott. This duel to be decided right now. Wes Mallott, your king, courtesy of winning the Player of the Year honor. Chris Barnes was third, defeated Norm Duke earlier today, 257 to 248. Good morning. Messenger kicks the 10 for Barnes. And Michael, you were uh, very impressed like with a West Barnes, Lott strike. particularly that 6-7-10 pickup in game one. The entire match rested on that. I just uh, wonderful to see him pick that up. Yeah. I'm no wonder you do it so much. What, uh, what little nuggets of bowling knowledge have you picked up here for your game over the last couple <laughs> hours? We'll get, as soon as the king rolls here, we'll get into some of the nuggets. I like how you step aside for the king. It's classy. <laughs> Oof, flies by the tent. King leaves the tent. Um, Wes was showing me all kinds of things. Stance, ball position, um, what not to do. So he, he said, he's, I'm going to use all this stuff against him, and I told him to stop it. <laughs> that See, that's that's the kind, the that's again, the benevolent king that Wes Benevolent Mallott king, is, that's right. right. He, so wants, he wants his empire to be stronger, to be better educated. It's all about giving. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, picks up the single spare, and here is Wes on one. his humble approach to his new title as Player of the Year. There's a lot of things, you know, I don't know if I, I take them as serious as I should, and this could be one of those things, you know, I'm just a real humble guy, laid back, and and uh, as I've said before, I think that might have a lot to do with the, the amount of success I've had as early as I've had in my career. He was talking to us earlier today, saying, you know, I'm not quite sure what exactly this means. I just know it's an awesome honor to have in my career. It hasn't totally set in yet. And there's Wes's first strike. And Mike, excuse me, Rob. Michael, when you watch these, these players, and I mean, these obviously two of the greatest, what is the one thing that stands out as, as, in, as far as technique goes? Balance, which I think is probably the key to any great competitor in any sport, is balance, which is probably you know the most underrated thing. I've just been watching these guys are never out here. of motion, out of rhythm. Even when they practice, you can see it. 
and it's hard, hard to keep work, your hard your eyes there. set on a target if your head's moving all over the place. So you're absolutely right. That's spot on. And and when you watch these great players, rarely do you see them fall off of shots. They're always posting that shot and getting up on that left knee and really be, being stable at the foul line. Come on. I liked him a lot in the, uh, the King's <laughs> crown on the throne. I'm sure that. I'm disappointed he didn't put the robe on. I wanted the cape too. I was just going to go and drape it on him yeah. like he was James Brown, but I thought that was probably inappropriate. I had, I just had the uh, hankering to go over there and just start feeding him grapes or something, you know. <laughs> Somebody fan him, please. Fan him down a bit. A large leaf type product. We have a lot of palm fronds here yeah. in Florida. We could break that out. So, Michael, you're getting set to duel the king right now, Wes Mallott. We're going to see your contest over the course of our next two telecasts. You sure you want to use the word duel? Right. I, I like it. Duel. I, you're, you're, you've got good size to you, man. You can stand up to Mallott. <laughs> don't be afraid of him. <laughs> I don't back down to him ever. There's a strike from strike a lot, Wes Mallott. Now People don't realize Wes is about, I mean, I'm, I'm just under 6'3". At about, I don't know, 225. Wes is what? I, I'm guessing he's 6'5". And 250. Wes is a big guy. Mm -hmm. He's a guy who doesn't practice a lot. He just kind of gets out there. Not a big practicer. Chucks no. it. He's got a, an interesting uh, focal point when he's bowling out there that we've talked about through the course of the season, Randy, about where his eyes go when he approaches. Right, right in front of him. Not, not down, not at the arrows. Right down at the foul line. Right at right the foul the line. There they go, right there. Come on, man! That's just a vicious ringing ten, but the reason why, work out very well for me. if you go back and look at the last couple of shots, that shot was left of target. Watch his eyes right here, and then right there, the eyes go down to the floor. Randy, how rare is that? It's very rare in that, you know, he actually looks at the target down lane where he wants the ball to, to go, in other words, like his, traje his trajectory, and then he puts his right foot on that same board. And then as he's going, he alters his approach based on how he wants to throw the ball. And then he draws that line back and he looks right at the floor. It's, it's a very unusual targeting system and a very unusual way to line up. But you know what? The only thing that matters is it works for him. For West, spare, strike, strike, spare. Barnes opened up with a two-bagger. Spare in the third. Here he is in the fourth. All even from three and a half. We haven't seen a Barney Bach in a long time. He's got to shake this one off, too. Check swing. <laughs> yeah. A little click. I'm going to just try and hook it with these guys. Randy, I'm not a former pro, but I'm assuming a click in your wrist of the hand that you throw the bowling ball is probably not an injury you want. So it's probably the start of congenitive arthritis, kind of like I have. Great job. Bounce back ability from Chris Barnes. Here he is on winning the extreme swing this past season. I mean, I think really versatility is a key for me. So the extreme swing tested the extremes and, uh, you know, I play, it plays a little bit to my strengths because I spend a lot of time working on the fringes and trying to get, you know, the box of tools that I have and trying to get it bigger and, and extend my ranges. And, and we tested those with the formats this year. Little double dribble there, huh? I, yeah, did I hear that? Is he, he was shaking that wrist, he still is. What's what's going on there? Little twinge. Something's going on. He bowled a lot of games, obviously through the course of the US Open a couple of weeks ago, but who knows? He's he uses one of the tightest thumb holes of any player on tour. And with that span being like that and that super tight thumb hole, one of the things that it does is it keeps him from squeezing. Come on, what? And the lot blows them up there in the fifth. You can tell the king is starting to loosen up a little bit. Three strikes in his last four frames. He's got a bit of a comfort zone on this on this scorpion pattern. I mean, this is his favorite 
pattern is bread and butter. His first win came on this pattern. Now, Michael, again, you have a match upcoming here with Wes that we're going to see over the course of the next two shows. Did you ever think <laughs> this conversation was going to end up with you coming to Lake Wales, Florida to <laughs> bowl the player of the year? Not on your life, Rob. <laughs> no chance. It was a great conversation. Got a lot of people talking and buzzing about the sport, about Wes Malott, and, and about some of the, the nuances. And we'll talk more about that as we're not going to let you go, Michael. You knew that was going to happen, right? ESPN, once they get their paws on you, they never let you go. Randy, Wes, Brian, and myself all back for the final match when we return to Lake Wales. back to the Kegel Training Center here in Lake Wales, Florida, about equidistant from the cities of Orlando and Tampa for our continuing coverage of the PBA King of Bowling, powered by AMP. We urge you to head on over to PBA.com for your chance to win a trip to NASCAR's AMP Energy 500 at the Talladega Super Speedway in November. All you got to do is click on the King of Bowling, powered by AMP link to learn about winning race tickets or even a chance to wave the green flag for Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s qualifying run or thousands of other great prizes check it out at pba.com today and time now for today's amp power stats randall and rob michael this is some great numbers to give you a, an idea of how much difference the players are playing the lanes and really the big difference is at target you can see that west malott's a good five or six sports left with a higher rev rate the reason being chris barnes is go going with more speed and going a little bit straighter it's all going to come down to carry. You have to have the right entry angle to knock all 10 down. Both players, a lot of power. Michael Wilbon, what of that did you understand? A lot of power. <laughs> 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 Trust me, you and I look at him the same way. I'm like, uh -huh, don't know. That's a word I've never heard. Great numbers. Uh -huh. what, who's winning? And we carry on. Winner? No winner right now. Barnes, Malott, even. Here's Barnes to pull ahead as he closes out the sixth. Will not get the seven. Yeah. Come on. All right. It's all right. Didn't affect anything. There it was again, it sounded like. Yeah, but a spare ball doesn't, it doesn't matter. He's just trying to throw it straight and hard anyway. This guy's got a lot of confidence. So the second half of the season for Chris Barnes was spectacular. And really one solid eight pin away from a possible second United States Open title and his second consecutive player of the year honor. But he got up and made the shot. Flies by the 10. So now he's staring at back-to-back -back spares and an opening for the king, the big nasty, Wes Malott, probably the best nickname on the tour. I think that Malott should be able to sit on the throne Absolutely. during the match. Yeah. How intimidating would that be? See, <laughs> I don't think he's aware that he has that possibility at his disposal. And it's people like us that <laughs> are there to remind him and are just warped enough to think that that makes perfect sense. Yeah, you don't want to know the conversation we had earlier today, Michael, about all the other things that I thought should accompany the king on his throne. <laughs> <laughs> a buffet should have been laid out. Juggle heads, heads of state should have been Some here. Something about a juggler, I think. Yeah, and not a tall one either. There's Malat looking for three in a row. Drops the three bag. Now, Michael, I, I will know you are a true connoisseur of bowling if you know what will happen if Malat strikes here in the eighth. If he strikes here in the eighth, well, he's going he's gonna to be ahead. You mean that? No. You mean a fourth consecutive strike, Correct. a handball? Come on now. 
my heart just skipped a beat. Rob? <laughs> I knew I always liked you better than that Tony guy. I can't even remember Tony's last name now. I just know it's PTI run by and hosted by Michael Wilbon. As it should be. I didn't know there was another host on that show. <laughs> there, I thought there, there was just Michael Wilbon. That's Say it with me. Hambone. Hambone! <laughs> Oh, just another bowling fan corrupted. <laughs> there is a lot of corruption here in Lake Wales. Is my imagination, or do we see some more velocity out of West the last two frames? Randy would be the expert. I'll let him handle that. Yeah, right on that, Mr. Wilbon, sir. <laughs> Off to your duties, Randall. <laughs> Barnes in the eighth. Matches him with the strike of his own. The he never goes down easily, does he? No, he, he just too talented. But you're right, Michael, the, the last shot West Malai threw was definitely faster. Uh, not a lot faster, but faster. But when his bowling ball is going down the lane with about a 450 rev rate, and that thing is just looking like a buzzsaw going sideways, it, I mean, it looks fast. And remember that that change of direction also makes it appear to be entering the pins much faster. We begin the foundation frame ninth. Barnes down 22. Do you understand any of that, Rob? Uh, we, again, it's like Tony. Were you talking? Oh. That's going to hurt. And right now, Barnes is experiencing bad pin carry. He's hitting the pocket just like Malad is. And I think the difference is ball speed. Chris Barnes is up around 20 miles an hour. He has to be because he's going much straighter to keep it on line. He has to throw it harder. And that's the result. And when, when you when you have bad pin carry, you ha you have to change the entry angle. So the only way Barnes could do that would be by slowing down, moving left, and opening up the lane. Rob, you'll make sure Randy does away with all these statistical analyses when I'm out Don't there. Don't worry about please, it. Please, please. I'll, I'll be here with all the gimmicky miles lingo. per hour, yeah. twelve point four, something like that. Wait till he starts please. talking about like apexes and vortexes. <laughs> I just my eyes roll back. Oh. Drops the nickel, throws a Yahtzee. Now, 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 he's, now the king is just pointing out. That was a, a point out to you, Will Bonner, as me? he likes to say. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out, Will Bonner. We're I'm on the last name you. basis. That's good. <laughs> how, about, how about efficiency of motion? Because that's what it looks like when Malat throws the ball. And he needs seven on this next shot. And he will retain his crown, his kingdom. The emperor. And everything Zion. that goes with it. Needs seven for the shutout. And Wilbon, you got next. That's the bad news, boys. You got next, my friend. <laughs> the king is coming for you. That is good stuff. Now, let's see. M Michael, you're getting pins. Does Wes have to throw a plastic ball? Yes, he does. Are you, what are you, th are you using reactive resin? Yes, I am. Good for you. I'm not crazy. This is like asking for about... Uh, you know, 30 strokes from Tiger here. <laughs> what a game, huh? Now Barnes looked to be in cruise control after kind of a, a dicey start by Milan with two strikes and two spares, two fours. He does not like that crown. But they put up now, this is the true test. Get out there with the robe on and then throw a strike with the lid. Keep the lid on, yes. He looks like some cartoonish character who should be selling some fast food as he's, he's shouting at you, He's barking. Bark bark game on. Oh, Randy, how many, how many pins should the plastic ball cost Wes? What can I rely on here? I think maybe 30. Okay. 30. Like that. Maybe more. He's right. so good, though. I, I don't. Michael, I don't know. It's not going to cost him as much as I'd like maybe. it to. <laughs> so let me say this, Randy. What does Wilbon have to throw over the course of our next two shows to dethrone the king? You're getting 57. Uh, I got a number in my head already. What are you thinking? It's 176. I, I like that. Well, in to the king, yeah, I'm not going to do it. Like it. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> oh boy, I like that number. I think you can do it. Watch your and your left and I'm it's offering coming. my help coming. to get <laughs> you to beat the king. Good. Any advice, just shout it out. You got it. Feel no shame. Do you, want, do you need any advice from me? 
<laughs> you gonna be all right? You be all right? Indian fights many bodies again. That that is a sign of a desperate man, Michael Wilbon. Michael Wilbon, the host, yeah, co-host of PTI. Thanks for joining us. We uh, enjoyed having you up here. Look Thanks, forward guys, for having to seeing you over the course of the appreciate shows. It. Thanks, Michael. Take on Wes Malott, and we will hear from the reigning king when our coverage of the PBA King of Bowling rolls on from Lake Wales, Florida. The PBA King of Bowling, powered by AMP, is brought to you by AMP, AMP Up, AMPEnergy.com, by GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance, and by Denny's, the new Grand Slam Witch from Denny's, everything you love about the Grand Slam, now in a sandwich. It's time now for our GEICO Championship recap, Randall. Thank you, Robbie. First match, Norm Duke, Chris Barnes. Duke needs two strikes and nine to shut out. Chris Barnes doesn't get it. So what does Barnes do? He gets up and strikes out in the tenth to win. In the title match, Barnes against the Big Nasty, the reigning king. Big Nasty shoots 268 to retain the crown. The king was not dethroned. Here's Brienne with Wes Malott. We're gonna help Wes here get into the uh, get into the part of King a little bit more. Wes, I believe you're forgetting something. Your crown, can't forget the all important crown. Wes, we're all having a good time with this. Are you having fun as your as being King yet? Well, absolutely. I'm just uh, <laughs> I'm just having fun with this, and uh, you know, fortunate. It's been an unbelievable season, and, and we're still riding the wave this week. Uh, you know, hopefully we can just hopefully the wave continues through the rest of the week and. Uh, end of the summer and, and obviously for the rest of my career. So we're just having a lot of fun with this and, and things are working out. Back to you guys. I love Chris Barnes as an accessory over there <laughs> with the front, enjoyable. So Wes Malott just pocketed himself $10,000 by continuing his run as king. And at the end of each one of these king shows, the king is gonna have the opportunity to convert three spares. If he successfully hits all three in order, He'll earn a $10,000 bonus. So here's Big West with the 310 baby split. They call it the, the King's Spare Challenge. I think they should call it the King's Spare Change because even though $10,000 is a lot of money, for a king, it, it'd be kind of like spare change. I got you. That actually made sense. Oh, we got a chance. Yeah, 310. Oh, oh. One down, two to go. So up now. Washout. One, two, four, Not ten. A lot of these last week. But. Get the ball left side of the head pin. Throw the head pin over into the ten. The ball covers a two, four. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, oh no! That and done. Is all she wrote for the king, Wes Malott. But Wes will be a part of our next show coming your way April 29th on ESPN2. Mike Scroggins taking on Patrick Allen, the winner to try and wrest the crown away from Wes Malott. Also on that broadcast, the King Wes Malott will be dueling PTI co-host Michael Wilbon. It was great to have Michael join us on the broadcast today. Finally, an opportunity to work with a true professional. It was really a privilege. What, what are you trying to say? <laughs> hey, hey Pearson, I don't think I like that. Brianne Pedigo and our entire crew, I'm Rod Stone. Thanks for joining us with the PBA King of Bowling. We'll see you again next Wednesday night.